Should I get crazy, guys, and dye it all black? Ah, stop dingoes. <laughs> I feel really bad for you, but I'm still laughing. And since I'm a pretty problem-solving SOB, I think I came up with a good solution. Check it out. Let's see if it's working. I'm Kristen, and this is Matt. We've spent the last four years sailing our $5,000 Craigslist boat to some of the most beautiful places in the Caribbean. From spearfishing in South Andros, Bahamas, staying in a treehouse and riding horses through the rainforest of the Dominican Republic, to even dodging hurricanes in Puerto Rico. We could have never imagined what this adventure would become. After gaining more sailing experience, we knew we had to make some serious upgrades to our boat if we wanted to keep this journey going. So we decided to go all in with our 40-year-old boat and get a new engine. We soon realized that we were in for more projects than we originally planned on. There's going to be some major changes coming up, so hit subscribe and join us for the journey. What's up guys? Welcome back to Sailing GBU. We are back with another video. We have been doing so much work that we can't even breathe. We're up to here. We can't even barely see these out of these projects. We've done cabinets. We've taken the engine out. We've mudded the bathroom. We've slapped on walls on the V-Birth. We've demoed everything left and right. Am I missing anything? We took the old engine out? I said that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, and windows. We boosh out the windows and we're still working on those if you can tell. Those are taking a lot of time. But anyways, we've had to redo some projects that we've already done in the past and today is another one because I have an embarrassing... I'm mad, I'm embarrassed, and I'm going to share it with you today what's going on outside. Alright, as you can see, I have a Dodger here and I have a sail pack here. In previous videos, if you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe. We have sewn these ourselves. We were really hyped on them, they came out really good, and they were... We bought the fabric from the store and we thought it was legit canvas and it was really good and waterproof. The other side is... What would you say, Matt? What was it called? like waterproof more waterproof it wasn't like the regular sunbrella canvas that was the same canvas on both sides it had one waterproof side so it was really good and we loved it but one negative side happened as we've been at the boat yard or marina this boat's been sitting in the sun and they have completely turned into hot turquoise i guess you would say and that's not the color we need them to be we want them to be navy blue like they were before and i said i don't want to re-sew these i don't want to fix them so i'm trying to cut some corners like always and i'm going to try to dye them so as you can see inside this is more closer to the original color the problem with dyeing it though which i'm afraid i have a denim blue that i've used before is i don't want to dye the plastic obviously so I'm gonna like take a sample piece and do an experiment and I'm going to try to take a sample piece of plastic and stick it in the dye and see if it takes the color. If it takes the color, I'm gonna have a different problem on my hands. I'm gonna have to tape it up or I don't know what I'm gonna have to do. But if it works, I also have black. Should I get crazy guys and dye it all black? I don't know. So let's do a little bit of experiments real quick. So while we're waiting for Kirsten's crazy corner cut and experiment, Kristen's crazy Excuse corner me. cut and experiment, we're gonna get some work done on this uh, engine room. Um, the engine is here in Puerto Rico today. I gotta go buy it, I gotta go pick it up. So before I go do that, probably in a few days, I gotta get this Primo. This is looking a little rough in here, so I gotta get this ready to put my engine in. All right, so first things first, I gotta get to sanding, which means Safety first, gotta get all my safety gear on, and it's because it's gonna be tight in here, so when you're in tight sanding, you'll blast a lot of stuff in your eyes and all in your nose if you don't wear your safety gear.
right, so a special thanks to Masterworks for helping us out with today's video. So guys, as you know, I've been investing a lot of time and money into my boat. Some could say I'm turning it into a work of art. And as art tends to appreciate and value, it got me thinking a lot about investing and different ways to make money. I was very interested to learn about art as an asset class. In fact, contemporary art prices outpace the S&P 500 total return by 164% from 1995 to 2021. If my boat could appreciate at that rate, I'd be a very rich man. And here's the cool part. There's this company called masterworks.io that allows people like me and you to invest in art as an asset class. Masterworks is unlocking the once exclusive art market and making it available for folks like you and me to invest in without breaking the bank. And they make art investing super easy. The Masterworks research team analyzes over 60,000 data points to find financially attractive works. They buy them, then they let you invest in shares representing an investment in that painting. And if you don't want to wait until they find a buyer, Masterworks also offers a secondary market on their website where you can sell directly to another member. One of the best parts of investing with Masterworks is they know what they're doing when it comes to selling art. They returned 32% to their investors in 2020 and 31% in 2021. And our friends at Masterworks are giving our viewers priority access to invest in their newest offerings. Just click on the Masterworks link in the video description to get started. All right, now back to the video. We got most of it sanded. I have a little bit of hand sanding to do, and then I think we're gonna be ready to wipe it down with acetone and start to paint. All right guys, so I want to, now that I have it sanded pretty well done, I want to get some paint in here. And one of the problems is that I obviously have water leaking from my prop shaft. So my old drip list doesn't work anymore. Now it's an all the way dripper. So I can't paint with a puddle <laughs> of water on the floor. And since I'm a pretty problem solving SOB, I think I came up with a good solution. Did you just call yourself a problem solving SOB? Yeah, problem that solving SOB. That could be a new t-shirt. <laughs> So I have an old piece of pipe that I've found and what I think I can do is cut this in half, make a trough for this water that's leaking out and just kind of stick it under there and all the water that's going to get caught will leak under here now and go to my bilge all the same. So I think that will work. Let's get into that and see if it does work. A lot of y'all probably didn't like me cutting to my hand like that, but this thing- I know, I sure did it. This thing's really light and easy to control and I'm just cutting pipe. I wouldn't do that with any sort of metal tubing or anything that I would have to be a little more dangerous with, but this is all light, easy to handle stuff. I'm gonna sell this to all the feet websites, Matt. <laughs> It'd be nice to have an extra source of revenue. All right, so now that I got my water, I think it's working. I'm gonna have a nice dry bilge here for once. And then, so what I'm gonna do now is fill these old holes with epoxy so that my new uh, mounting brackets that go in there are gonna have something good, solid to hold to no matter where I gotta put them. Also too, thinking about this wet bilge, this water that was leaking through, it made me think about, do any of my other boaters out there have a wet bilge? If you're a hashtag team wet bilge on the old boats, then let me know. I see these boats online all the time that have dry bilges, and I'm like, <laughs> where they do that at? Uh, my, my bilge kicks about 90 gallons of salt water out of my boat a day, so, you know, let me know. Hashtag team wet bilge. <laughs> I feel really bad for you, but I'm still laughing. <laughs> you got a syringe? Hey, bro. I'm wasting this West Systems. I hear the universe whisper, yeah, she's singing. We're the only ones up while everybody else is sleeping. This is our escape. Come on. We really gotta let go. All right. 
right guys, while we wait for that epoxy to dry, it's time to get back to my experiment. Is it going to dye the plastic? Let's pull it out, Matt. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I don't think it dyed it, did it dye it? Hold this, let me give it a whap. What do you think? I don't see any bluish tint to it, but you know, it could be cool to have blue tint plastic. No, yeah, we want to be able to see through it, but that's good. That means I can just dip in my Dodger into the dye. This was a piece, it wasn't quite faded though, so it does look darker though, right? It does look darker to me. If I'm being perfectly honest, it looks darker. All right, guys, we might have to do it. I don't know if I have enough dye for this, but what do you think? Should Hell I, yeah, we got I, enough I dye. gotta have enough of the same color dye because I don't want my Dodger to be different color than my sail bag, and I got that one on Amazon. Blue jean. All right, guys, stay tuned for our... <laughs> Why do you look so scared? Stay tuned for our experimentos. So I decided to take it off. We're going to dye the Dodger upstairs. So let's go. I'm getting excited. I hope this comes out. All right, guys, now that we're upstairs, as you can see, this is the part that was out of the sun and that's close to the original color. And this is what it is now. So. It obviously faded, probably cutting corners and not getting the actual brand Sunbrella might be the problem. So if you have Sunbrella canvas and tell me if it doesn't fade, it says it doesn't fade, so let me know. But for now, I'm going to try to fix this. We're going to pour in one hot water, almost boiling with some hot shower water into a tub, and then we're going to soak it for about an hour and hope that it comes out good. You're supposed to use rubber gloves there, big dog. No rubber gloves for me. stuffed it in there as best as I could. There's really no way I could get in there without folding it. So if it comes out tie-dyed, it was not my fault. You saw it here first. Hey guys, know a lot of y'all are worried about Bear because you haven't seen her since we moved on the boat, but she's just living her best Airbnb life. Limitless couches, limitless bunk beds, limitless air conditioning. So, you know, she's being a sweet baby. She's happy, but she's kind of turned into a little stinker. All right, now that we let the epoxy dry for a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and get the first layer of paint in there. And what are we using there, big dog? We're gonna use what we tried to paint our boat with one time, the Jotun XP. I have a whole gallon left over. It's light gray, but it's for the engine room, so I think it'll give a nice polish to the engine room, and it's light enough that I'll still be able to see any oil spills or anything like that. What was those quotations for? People say don't paint it black because you won't be able to see the oil spills or they're like, you know, make sure it's a Who light Who would color. paint their engine room black? I'd paint mine black because I think it'd look cool. Black and red. It'd, it'd be look... dark in there. See, it's going to be dark in there either way. I think it's a little too late for your hands, my dude, at this point. Rubber gloves are really not going to help you out. I just don't want to get sticky from this stuff. Think you're making the perfect pair. 
I'll never change for the better It's not like you'd even care You go and bother him, he's gonna leave you blue The echoes of the past will come right back to you You think you're always in the right Oh, you could never do no wrong One day you'll feel the hurt and pain Un and to watch you fall was strong You go and bother him, he's gonna leave you blue The echoes of the past will come right back to Now that our engine room's painted, it's time to check out did our canvas die or did it not die? Right now, go down in the comments guys, did it die or did it not? Obviously, if you guys are a Patreon, you know it already died. We do weekly updates up there, so if you guys are curious about wanting to know what's happening in real time with our boatyard projects, make sure you check out that link down below and let's check it out. Let's see if it's working. As you guys can see, the dye did dye it. The only thing is, I think, because I used denim blue, which I already previously had for like some tie-dye pillows, it wasn't quite the color I was looking for. I needed the navy blue writ dye, or like navy blue add a little bit of black, because I wanted it to be like midnight black, or midnight blue. So it did dye it i'm gonna see what it looks like when it dries it'll probably even lighten a little more it is darker and it is a better color but just not quite there so it's a little more uniform i'm excited though because if it dies we can correct the dye. <coughs> it wasn't that hard to do you know if it works we can make it a darker blue so i'm happy that it even died because i was concerned about that fabric it was kind of like a nylon type fabric that i was worried for it to accept a stain but i'm hyped about that <laughs> Hyped about the engine room. The engine room is looking good. We have a few more things. We got to keep filling those holes and probably do some more paint layers and then work on where the gas tank goes. Or... Yeah, we definitely, the thing is I don't have my engine here yet. So that's the reason I didn't take those supports completely apart. I may have to take two inches of them off. I may have to add three inches. Um, I may get in there a little bit more and see that some wood, some old wood needs to be taken out. So this was basically just preemptively me getting in there, getting a lot of, getting as much work done in there as I can get until before I have my engine here because I want that to go as smoothly and as quickly as possible. So I don't know what I have to do with those engine mounts. So I left them more or less and I just put a little bit of epoxy in there because maybe if it pops right in there, we put some lag bolts in and we're good to go and we're down the lane and we'll finish the cabinets in Martinique. <laughs> what? I don't know about that, but we're getting, things are just going along. There's a ton of projects. We might have bit off more than we can chew, but we're shoving it in our guck guckles. What do you we, call them? We can chew pretty hard. What do you call those? Your, not your guckles, probably. <laughs> Jowls? No, your... Cheeks? Your gluckles. Like if you're a pelican. What's a pelican's throat called? Is it called a gluckle? I can't <laughs> imagine you would know that. But either way, projects are going great. We're fixing our old boat, and we're going to have an amazing boat. So that's the main thing behind all this is it's like... <laughs> At, when it's all done, you're like, wow, we have a really cool boat. The boat drives itself. I can't wait to be one of those guys that, you know, goes 10,000 miles on autopilot and talks about how much I sail. So I can't wait for that to happen. I'm going to have a washing machine, no more lugging it up, up hills and all that stuff. So, you know, the boat's looking good. And if I got to suffer now for a month or two, don't matter because I got to have a great boat. All right, guys, make sure you subscribe, like, leave us a comment down below. And we'll see you next week for 
More projects. Yeah, we might already said this. I'm pretty high from those paint fumes, but... What? Subscribe and let us know if you even care about these projects, because we can go to the beach. That was like three videos ago we asked everybody, and they said, yeah, they like them. They do care? But yeah. maybe they just cared about that one thing. Maybe they don't care about painting the engine room. Let me know if you care. Bye, guys.